Hi, Motion Men. We're here at Solid Rock Ranch, the home of our Men's Sentinel Retreat happening September 25th and 26th. We're gonna have so many activities from fishing, golfing, basketball, football, and so much more. We're gonna have a great steak dinner, great worship, and a great word. You can sign up right now on our Motion Church app or online. Now check out this video about Men's Night. Dr. Ty, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Uh, you know, there's not many friends I have in this life, but I consider you one of them. Highly respect you. And uh, the thing that you really bring uh, to my life that I've seen from close and from afar is you're consistent. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of people that love Jesus for a while or they're in this fad diet for a while, but that's not you. Uh, for the years that I've known you, you've been consistent with God. And I just love being around you because you've never wavered, man. You're just always just going for it. I mean, that, not that we don't have bad days. We right. all do. But just your consistency. And I love that about you. And But the thing that really impresses, the, the very thing that you do, uh, you preach and you preach and then you do it. It's 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 a cyclical thing about you. And I, I watch you snack and you're not snacking on Twinkies ever or you say, oh, I'm having a cheat day. I don't think you've ever had a cheat day. I, I think you're always doing the right thing. No, I think you are. Got That's, my cheat days don't, 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 take, don't take that away from me, right? <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, you know, God has a lot to say about health. Mm. You know, he created us in his image, and that means not only spiritually do we reflect his glory and, and we worship the creator and, and as we love his creation, right? But also as his creation, we, are, we have to be stewards, not only right. the things that he created, but over us ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there is a great responsibility about stewarding what God's given us right. because we're his ambassadors. We're here on this world for a purpose. And if our health's bad because we're sabotaging ourselves, that's not being the best stewards. Now there's things that happen, of course, that it's not God, it's just the way it is. And, mm -hmm. and we do the best that we can and, 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 and realign ourselves to at least do the very best with what we got, mm -hmm. right? But man, I, I just want to talk to you about Man, what, what is it that we can do in this life when it comes to our health? Because being a doctor, you're a chiropractor, you adjust me all the time. And every time you do, I just feel so much better. Mm -hmm. uh, my back was a mess when I first came here 15 years ago. And I now I, I hardly ever have to sleep on the floor. And I really believe it's because of the stewardship and, and through your guidance. But, you know, there's a lot of men right here uh, here that are over 40. And they're, they're just noticing, man, they're falling apart. Mm -hmm. It's true. I mean, things start popping, especially if you're an athlete. You're used to just oh, yeah. dunking a ball, and all of a sudden, man, my hamstring's just busted. You know, or you're young. Ah, my life is always going to be the you know the same, right? And so, you know, there's this philosophy that you've taught and you said a whole lot to me before: is you got to listen to your body, mm -hmm. right? So, why don't you help us if you're young or if you're in your fourth quarter of your life? What are some of the most essential things that we need to do? God, that's such an open-ended question. There's so many parts to that. And first is, like and our you podcast said, is two hours long. No, right, just exactly. Easy. Yeah, we got to keep it under <laughs> under a good amount of time there. But uh, the most, I mean, there is not a most important time uh, thing. Mm. There, there's so many different facets that you have to do. But I would say, if I were to kind of guide it down to why I do this, number one. Um, scripture says that these these bodies that we have they're they're not ours hmm. they're his they belong to him so, so for me that puts me in a position well okay he's given me everything I have so that means I need to take care of that and I need, like you were saying we need to steward that well hmm. so that puts a responsibility that's different than if it were mine I might not treat it as well I might hmm. just be like. Psh, Whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's my body, so I'll do whatever I want. And then there's another part of the scripture that says 
that we also, we, we do what we do for our spouses. So mm-hmm. guys are supposed to take care of themselves for their spouses as the spouse is supposed to take care of their bodies and their, their health for us. So again, it's, it still points back to this thing isn't ours and we have a responsibility to make sure it's doing wow. well. That's okay. so good. So that's that's one of the first things, and then uh, the second thing is First uh, uh, Corinthians six twenty says, "Honor God through your body." Again, still pointing to what we're supposed to do to make sure that we're honoring God. So mm-hmm. it just puts on a different level for me, and I've always been really good with rule following most of the time. I won't, you know, I won't talk about speed suggestions and things like that, but right. as far as other rules like that, um, those, are, those are the things that I do really well because I want to be consistent. And something for me that's been a, a real big driver is I don't ever want anyone to be able to say, Oh, you're saying this, but you're doing this. You're a hypocrite. Mm. I don't. I just that would just crush me. Right. And so that's another thing that drives me to to work hard to go. Okay, well, if I'm teaching people that we need to move our bodies, that means I need to move my body. I need to exercise and be consistent with that. If I'm teaching people about health and food and this and that, I need to follow those same guidelines and and be the leader in that. Right. And so that keeps me consistent. And then through the years, um, I've put together. Um, these six C's of success, and I won't go into that um, too much now, but those six C's of success were, you know, within those, there's clarity, uh, clarity on the mission, uh, on, on what I want out of this and what what I'm doing this for. And then there's consistency, there's commitment, there's challenge. you got to have a challenge. That's one of my things, yeah. too, I'm massively competitive, too. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm yeah, over-competitive, uh, and so to a fault sometimes. But I can use that as a way to uh, push myself a little bit more. So, for example, for a workout or something like that, if I... If I don't want to do, if there's a workout that pops into my head that it's like, oh, I don't want to do that, that just made, that just set the tone right there. And it says, well, that means you got to do that right. because you're going to overcome that I don't want to attitude. And we're going to do that and we're going to feel more accomplished at the end of that. Um, but signing up for a challenge, doing something that where, it's like, okay, I'm going to do a, let's say a, a Spartan or I'm going to do a 5K or I'm going to do something signing up. And investing into it is something that makes you train for it. I want to do well in this competition, so that's going to drive my competitive nature. To okay, well, I got I got to practice. I got to eat right, and if I'm gonna if I'm gonna exercise, I'm gonna make sure I feed my body. And so, it's just kind of a cycle thing that if I'm signed up for something, I work harder at it, and then once I've conquered that, then I just. I work out all the time. I eat right, you know, most of the time. Um, and it's not as much of uh, having to do the challenge now that it's ingrained in my life because it's now become a lifestyle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's the ultimate goal of where you want to get is all of these steps along the way, you want to create that consistency so that it's now a lifestyle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's when you've won the game. When it's a lifestyle, now it's just this is what we do. This is what we do. We make time for it. Um, if something gets in the way of it, well, we know that we have to move some things around then because this is now part of our lifestyle. Why? Because we're going we're gonna to honor God through our body. Um, we're going to honor our body uh, and, and make sure that it's good for our wives uh, and vice versa. Wow. Um, and, and so that constant cyclical driving force just is there. Um, and it just, it makes things a lot easier, man. You know, we just said about clarity. It's, it's so good because, you know, working out is not about anything else really to have a clear purpose of why you're working out. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I rent a car, it's not the same the way I drive my, uh, my real car or uh, the car that I own. It's like, ah, that doesn't matter. You know, I, I drive a whole lot. It is man. It's rental. I have the insurance on it. And it's because it's not mine. Right. And, uh, you know, we go on, you know, I, when my, my parents used to pay for gas, which well, it's a horrible example because they never did, but let's just say <laughs> they did. Uh, you spend more gas. You know, it's the whole, that's the whole, you know, ownership, right? Yeah. Responsibility. What you're saying is really the clarity has to be, this is your body. Yeah. This, is, this is nobody else's and God's given it to you. And I think that separates everything else, yeah. right? From being uh, normal. It's, yeah. this is God's. 
tell me, how did you come to that perspective? I mean, because I want to talk about the six C's because I think you're the clarity and consistency part and the, what the cur- courage. Uh, no, it's it's uh, clarity. So you get a, a clear idea of yeah. what you want. What's what's so so like what what is that? What's like, my end result? Okay, let's say so. It, it can be any scale of things. Um, for me. Everything I do now is going to affect me later on. Okay. Okay. And so when I mean later on, I want to be 90 year, years old, loving life and cruising and hunting and doing all that stuff. So you reverse engineer that. That comes back to right now. And what I'm doing right now will get me to that point. Mm-hmm. If I start when I'm 80, not going to not gonna happen. Right. You know, it's time's already gone. So I have to make sure and say, if I want a great ending to this life, not sucking down medications and not, uh, you know, just really just living in a diseased state. I got to make sure that my body is going to be right now because I just trust the way God designed us is really, really awesome. And very little of is, is genetic. And I don't want to get into a place where now I have to rely on those medications because you know there's a time and a place for those meds. Of course, of course. But if we can if we can eliminate as much as possible, now's the time to be doing that. So right. if we are already to that point, well, then our, our goals and our our clarity of what we're where we're going for is going to be a little different than if I'm not there yet. So I'm 20 years old. Okay. So I mean, that's you know, how do you talk to a guy who you know eats all he wants? And because of testosterone levels, we'll talk about that a little bit later, yeah. or for whatever reasons, he's in shape all the time. How, yeah. how do you bring clarity to a guy like that? That's a tough one because, I mean, again, I, you and I were at 20, and we we're invincible, and that's when we jump out of the gym, and, and you know, our, our warm-up is, you know, <laughs> three seconds of, all right, there we go, we're ready to go. Right. Um, so if I were to look back at me, I think that would be the best way to, to do that and say, hey, uh, you know, younger me – this is what's going to be happening. I would have to say, you know, from that from that experience perspective, if we're not doing the proper things, you're you're going to pay for the you're going to pay the price later on. Mm-hmm. And those proper things are making sure that you are feeding your body the right way because the, the you know as I, I go by this all the time, you are what you eat. I mean, it's the silliest, oldest school kind of saying. But I'm, I'm really, a lot of my success comes from just getting back to the basics. Mm-hmm. You know, so many people look for the fad everything, the newest everything, and the, you know, the, the uh, you know, the carnivore diet, the plant-based diet, the, you know, the zone diet, the everything diet. But we are all different in how we're made. Mm-hmm. So what we put in our bodies is what we're, our bodies going to, are literally going to make up the cells of. Mm-hmm. And so we have to think about that and listen to our body as well. And I can remember times back in the day where I was, you know, I'd recover slower. Um, and because, man, all I ate was pasta or something like that, the, you know, like a fettuccine Alfredo or something. And then the next day I was super tired. Looking back now, I'm like, oh, I remember that now, but I didn't even think about it then because it just didn't, it didn't hit me as much. So I would say to a 20 year old, I would say be realistic with what you're putting into your body. You can handle better things, but drinking energy drinks, man, that is going to set you up for big time failure. It's later. a big, it's a big deal. I'm it's finding, a huge I'm finding deal. guys having kidney issues yeah. or adrenal, high blood pressure, adrenal glands, oh, massive adrenal at, at 20, 25. It's yeah, you want to talk about tanking your testosterone, just keep on drinking those, uh, those. So energy drink drinks. will do that oh, to you. Big time. It just, it, maybe that's what yeah. you need to tell a 20 year old. Right. <laughs> right? That's like, yeah. If you want to, you I, want I, your junk to work later on, you better get off of these things. Well, the, the surest way of birth control is put a 20-year-old babysitting a lot of little kids. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Exactly. I don't, I, um, so, yeah, you are what you eat. And you said yeah. something. I, don't, I want to reiterate what you just said. Your cell cycle is how many years because what you put in it is... One year. It's one yeah, year. For, for the majority of your cells, 73 trillion cells in your body, obviously there's differences and in, in, in shorter spans for some. But it's basically your body's going to be almost brand new in a year. So what you put in now is really, yeah. you're looking 12 months from yeah, now. Yeah, because everything that replicates is going to replicate off of, it's going to copy-paste, basically. Wow. So if you are 
continue to feed yourself these certain things, then your body's going to use those those certain fats. If they're bad fats, they're going to use those to, to have the cell membranes. Now you're going to have really rigid cell membranes that are going to replicate rigid cell membranes and on and on and on versus now if you put the good stuff in, oh, that copy paste goes into now a better cell membrane and that starts off everything. And then there's the way the nutrition works in our body is it's a chemistry, you know, uh, um, uh, it's basically a chemistry set. You know, you're talking about biochemical reactions. I need A, uh, I need compound A to mix with compound B, and they need to be in the right mixtures to get to C, and then those need to be in the mix to get to D to be able to have this reaction happen. Well, so isn't it interesting that we think that biology is not spiritual at all, but our biology, I mean, from I could talk a, a whole lot of different areas, and I won't right now. But your biology does affect your spirituality. Yeah. Oh, huge. Right. I mean, huge. You know, people have struggles already, possibly with you know um, things that happen emotionally, mm -hmm. and if that's already a fight, but you're feeding things that don't help, that yeah. becomes even more. It becomes worse, right? Absolutely. It's like anything. I mean, it's it, it all works together. How how likely are you going to be to get up and work out? When you're exhausted because of the poor choices that we're making in food, and then our sleep cycle is off. I mean, it all works together. And then, how likely are you to get up and get in the word? Because you know, yeah. usually it's like, oh man, I'm excited to get in the word because I'm happy. I'm, I want to talk to God right now. But when you're smoked and you're tired and you're just you're like whatever, I don't, you know. Right. So that spiritual side of things starts to take a back seat, and then you know that's where Satan wants to just keep going and driving us. Oh. Yeah, you don't need that. So the kingdom of God really talks about reaping and sowing. It talks about how it works. And uh, when you sow something later on, you will reap it. It's the same thing with our bodies. I know we yeah. already know this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. But it, it's yeah. but it's it's really simple, but it's really an, an issue with our and with our men's life. Yeah. Uh, my wife tells me, man, go and work out. And I go, stop it. Why? He goes, you always come happy. You always mm -hmm. become happier. When, I know when you've been working out. And I said, come on. I'm being serious. No, yeah. the whole family knows it. You're happier. You're more upbeat. Uh, tell me, is that true? Is that, that is, is, is that something? so good. I love that. I love okay. that you even said that because it is 100%. And that's why I say we need to listen to our bodies. Mm. You've got to listen to your body. What is, and then, and you have to remember that feeling right after you work out that euphoric, that serotonin rush, and endorphin rush that you're so all what is just, what is serotonin? And what is serotonin endorphin? is a happy hormone, basically. What does it do? So, uh, when we exercise, when we, when we, um, pump our heart and get just get the body flowing. There's all kinds of hormones that just get released, and you got cortisol that's coming because that's the fight or flight, and you need that extra energy uh, for your muscles to get the heck out of dodge. And you do that over a short period of time, then you shut her down. Then serotonin, boom, it kicks in and says, "Woo, man, that feels good." Really, you know. And then now you got this happy hormone that's in it flowing through you, and then endorphin rush, and so literally it just flushes your system of the back stuff okay wow. number one it's good for, it's exercise if you have digestive problems man exercise get the body moving and all of a sudden exercising helps your digestion oh heck yeah heck yeah you you if you're irregular with your digestion start exercising no that'll change big time really yeah you gotta move to get those things moving um but yeah it's it's just again taking that moment to remember right after I exercise, I feel the best. Yeah. Like I, I have these, I've had uh, a, a few concussions in the past. Um, and now, so now I get it. <laughs> you're right. No, it makes sense, doesn't it? No, right. Now I get it. <laughs> um, and I've had, you know, I, I'm susceptible to migraines, right? Okay. And so how I combat those migraines is I'll do a heavy exercise. Like get my heart just cranking for like really? 20, 30 minutes. Gone. So it's that, again, it's just pushing that blood to the brain to be able to settle things down and open up the blood supply. And wow. yeah, and so uh, again, why, why do I exercise? Man, I love how I feel and, and, and who I am, like, like Christy was saying. That is awesome that, that she said and recognized, I love you right afterwards. Because man, you are just the happiest. Different, I'm different, yeah. You're different, yeah. So uh, food, diet, does a whole lot to your biology. Yeah. Uh, but 
working out does a whole lot, not just by getting in shape, but it's, it's also your chemistry, right? Yeah. You're telling with, mm-hmm. with, especially with guys. Yeah. So you mentioned three, what else, what else hormone? I mean, testosterone, testosterone obviously. Yeah. That's can, a big one. Now you can, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, as you older as you get, you can't increase the testosterone, but you can bring it to the capacity in which your age is at, or is that false? Well, you, you know, there's, there's a lot of conflicting studies on that if, as far as what I've read. So I can't really comment on that. I can just only comment on my own okay. stats. And at 47 years old, I have more testosterone flowing through right now than I did when I was 37. No kidding. I just got it tested two weeks ago. And my testosterone is like in the almost over-optimal. And that's because not only your what you're eating, but how you're exercising. It yeah. releases all yeah. this. The cons- you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rephrase that to the consistency. Okay. Not necessarily how. But what I've found over the years with eating and with exercise especially, and probably probably with a lot of different things, when when you eat, so let's talk about weight loss. Sure. Okay. So when's the easiest part in your, in your you ch- you're changing your nutrition, when is the most uh, weight you're going to dump? What's the most weight? Yeah. When, is, when are you going to dump the, the highest amount of weight? Right in the beginning, right? Oh, sure. Yes, yeah. got so it. So it's going to come off. I'm, thinking, gonna... I'm just thinking morning, evening. I'm yeah, trying to figure no, no, out. No. I got in, it. Got in, it. The, in the time frame of, like, let's say, six months or three months, you're going to lose the most weight in that first month or two, mm-hmm. right? Because you know, you're, you're changing your nutrition. So that means now we're changing the inflammatory response to your body because that's where a lot of weight retention is. It's just fluid got because it. you're swelling. And so people need to know that. Is if you're re, the retain the retention of fluid is your body is stressed mm. and it's freaking out and it's inflamed. Your whole body is inflamed. So when all of a sudden you start doing the right thing, you dump a lot of weight. What's well, a lot of water weight? And so with that, then you dump that water weight and then you get down to a point when you plateau. And so this is and again, this is my challenge brain. Okay, this is me going oh. Oh, now I recognize that I need to overcome that. So you hit this plateau and that's where everyone falls off. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't say everyone. Most people get frustrated. I can't lose any more weight. And I'm, you know, I give up. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the, the weight comes back on. All it is, it, and I look at it like it's God's way of pushing us to the next. Are you going to be that guy that's going to overcome this? Or are you going to, are you going to fall back? Interesting. And how many times are you going to fall on your face to where you go, oh, I'm at this point again. I'm going to push through this and see what happens, okay? Yeah. So we hit that plateau. We get frustrated. But those that push through that, all of a sudden, boom, we go to the next level. Yeah. And that time frame can be two weeks, four weeks. It can be a certain amount of time. But I know with exercise, I've plateaued, been frustrated, power through it, and boom, I hit that next level. That's so good. And with nutrition, same thing, plateau, plateau, boom. As, as long as you're consistent with it, your body will take a rest from whatever it's doing and then it'll say, all right, now I'm ready to go to the next level and go again. So we're, we're talking about health. I love those, those, the, the consistency, the clarity. Um, now what do we do with, you know, listening to our bodies, right? What mm-hmm. if, man, I, I don't really care anymore. What, how do I get, you know, motivated again? Do I go back to the clarity again? Or is, do I have to be around a group of, of other guys that are willing to do this together with? Because... When I'm around you, you challenge me. I mm-hmm. challenge you, and it's just this incredible thing. Tell me a little bit. Is there any science to that? Do you do you do you believe that? Tell me. Have you seen success when there's accountability with other guys? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There's there's all kinds of science, but even that, I go back to one thing. Where does Satan want us? Where he wants he wants to isolate us so because true. he can do the most damage to us. Yep. He can talk to us the best and the most clear. When we have a bunch of guys like you're on my bench, you're you you are a mentor of mine, uh, and I just look so up to you. Um, and so you're one of my guys that's on my bench that I know that if I surround myself in these guys, they're going to hold me to a higher standard, a higher level, and not even. Not even in, in like a, a verbal way. You just being you holds me to that higher mm, standard, mm, right? Yeah. And so that's incredibly important. I'm glad you touched on that because surrounding you with with the people that you want to be like or be you know be helping to excel as well, and we can reach uh, reach different levels together. That's incredibly important. And it's it's important because you know for me, I I realize that doing this for so many years. That isolation is the first and the main thing that keeps you addicted to something. Right. And, or, yeah. and, and isolates you, and you become mm-hmm. this, 
you almost withdraw. Yeah. And the, the biggest thing is to get you out of that isolation and put you around other people. Mm-hmm. Um, exercising kind of creates your own world too, right? It yeah. gives you that that ability to feel good. But at the end of the day, you still need that accountability with guys because um, if I'm doing all the bad things, the guys that I'm hanging out with are doing the bad things, right? Right. But if you're doing the right things with the right people, yeah. Uh, but health is health is. We, why do why are there so many books written about health? And and we have the and and here's. I'm asking kind of a rhetorical question, but in America, including myself, I find myself at times going up and down and right. stuff. Yeah. Is it because of, is it all of these areas of clarity, consistency, or lack of accountability? But give me a little bit before we, we're about to close, but give me a little bit of what you could talk to us guys, because at the end of the day, there's a lot of men here listening and they heard this before, but now they're hearing from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. I Hopefully it's coming more from them, a biblical perspective, yeah. right? But after this, they're going to say, okay, now what? Yeah. What do I do now? And then how do we tether all that together? Okay. That's where the clarity comes in. What do you want? Yeah. What do you want out of this? What What are your goals? Do you want to be looking good for your wife? Do you want to be looking good for your girlfriend? Uh, do you want to live longer, healthy quality of life? Um, so it's really about sitting down and just asking yourself, what do you want? So that you can now figure out what direction you're going to go. Exercise doesn't have to be three hours in the gym every single day. Exercise doesn't have to be an Arnold Schwarzenegger workout. You can do an exercise in 15 minutes, but you be consistent with it, and it's going to change your world. Wow. And so I think it just comes down to what is it that's going to drive you? What is your ultimate goal from this? And I think starting with that, the goal gets to change along the way. And then another key aspect of that, too, is set benchmarks. Okay, don't set 90 years old as your, that's my goal is I want to be on the cruise ship at 90 and not have any benchmarks and, and mm, rewards yeah. and things like that. You have to reward yourself. There's got to be something that you're going to look forward to. When I get a month in and I've done I've done three days a week of working out, I'm going to do this for myself right, right. you know, and reward myself. And then my next month, I'm going to go to four days a week. And if I, if I, come, you know, if I fall off a little bit, that's okay. I'm going to jump back on. You know, I'm, I'm not going to condemn myself. I'm, it's okay. That's human. I've done that. I mean, shoot, that, that's just how it works. Um, so as long as we're not uh, just falling off and getting discouraged, that we can be encouraged and encourage ourselves. And again, go, hey, God wants me to do this for him. What is, a, thank you, God, for giving me all of this. And here's how yes. I'm going to pay this debt back. That's so good. I take care of myself because this is not my vessel. This is yours. Yes. It says it, and again, this is where the rule comes. Uh, rule following comes into me. It says it in the book. Yeah, you yeah. know, the Bible is is our rule book. Um, however close we want to follow it, that's on us. And I just I want to follow it. If it if he says, "This is my body, not yours," then I'm going to go. Well, you did all this for me. I'm going to take care of this. Darn it! I love that much. You never bring shame or condemnation, but I love the the challenge. You have a really good balance. I've I've seen you talk to some people like. Well, if that's what you want to be, that's that's fine. Yeah. Go over and go. That, yeah. Is that what you want to do? Good. Yeah. But but the Bible gives us a different prophetic vision, right? And right. so, hey, how about if we do this? I mean, I'm I'm just right now surprising you with something. I didn't even oh, tell geez. you. <laughs> I want to do a sentinel challenge, a physical okay. challenge. I want to. We haven't. I haven't. Would you be up to it? I guess you have Let's no go. choice now. But you said the word challenge. I'm already in. Well, look, Come on. we got a camp coming up, a retreat, and you know our tailgate party. We had. Only 40 people because of the form of protest. No, it's not 40, but I have to say it was 40 because I don't want to get in trouble. I think I saw 40. No, yeah, yeah we all yeah. saw 40. Yeah. Uh, and, but this, we're, having re- we're having this retreat. Don't you think it'd be pretty cool if we did like a, a sentinel physical health challenge? Yeah, that'd be fun. Like for a three-month challenge, and we yeah. challenge every guy, every dude. Yeah. Not, not, not because it's just, just to get in shape, but for clarity, yeah, for consistency. consistency. Yeah. What are the other ones? Will you repeat the other ones? So it's it's clarity, consistency, commitment, because you got to commit into yeah. it. Um, it's change. So when you when you do this, you have to be willing to yeah. change. You yeah. got to you got to look at what that change is going to look like, and so that just helps to be aware of it. And then the challenge was basically sign up for something. Well, I guess I'm challenging you to help me out, right? I love do it. this thing. Hey, Dr. Ty. Thank you so much oh, for investing in so many guys' lives. Everyone that's watching right now, I, I challenge each guy to, to be a part of an accountability group, a sentinel group, and uh, to take care of our bodies unto the Lord. That's so, right. Thank you so much. Absolutely. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.